Was I dreaming? No. You're in California. Make sure you join us Monday as we kick off our week-long celebration of iconic TV moms. So when I say Annie Potts icon, it, it makes me feel old. <laughs> All right, before we go, let's bring back Rachel real quick from New York because Seth Meyers is stirring the Spider-Man pot. Woo! Yeah, he sure is, Kev. Seth had Andrew Garfield on his show and asked him about Tom Holland's claim that one of the Spider-Man's costumes had a fake backside. Happening now. A woman accused of a murder for hire plot on the stand again today, saying the whole thing she was forced to do. We'll explain coming up. For a few days now, I've been talking about the chance of rain and a few storms over the weekend. Will we have an update to that forecast? Timing has changed. We'll see you in a bit. Hundreds of colorful pinwheels going up at a park at Hemisphere as part of Children's Mental Health Awareness Month. How you can be part of the conversation next. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, a recall alert from HEB this afternoon. It's for the HEB Bakery Two Bite Brownies. They could have pieces of metal in them. The recall is for the brownies sold alone or in party trays. HEB says it has received two customer complaints so far. If you have the brownies, throw them out or return them for a refund. You can call HEB's customer service line at 1-855-432-4438, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now we also have breaking news on the northwest side. You see it right there. Look at the wreckage. San Antonio police are looking for a driver who fled a crash scene on Wickersham and Tezel Roads. This is in the area of Braun and Loop 1604. Officers at the scene told KSAT that this happened around 3.30 this afternoon when an SUV was T-boned by a truck that ran a stop sign. The SUV rolled. Two people had to be taken to the hospital. We don't know how they're doing at this hour, but we do know that SAPD is looking for the driver. New at five, death threats and fear. It's what Angelica Navarro de Paz told a jury today was behind the murder for hire plot that she's accused of. She also said that this was all a plan by a confidential informant who tiff, tipped off police. Erica Hernandez has been covering this solicitation capital murder trial all week, and she breaks down this latest testimony. With the help of a Spanish translator, Angelica Navarro de Paz told a different story from what the prosecution presented, starting with her relationship with the confidential informant being called Katie. She always carries a gun in her back, and she would tell me, get on, get on. And if you don't get on, she would take out her gun, a big one, and shoot me. The informant gave police the tip about Navarro de Paz wanting to kill her boyfriend's sister. Navarro de Paz testifying today the entire plan was put together by Katie, who she says forced her to call the alleged hitman. She told me, if you fail me this time, I'm going to kill your children and your husband. Navarro de Paz is facing a solicitation capital murder charge accused of hiring an undercover officer to kill her boyfriend's sister over a $40,000 debt. Navarro de Paz does not deny hiring the hitman in the audio recordings. Instead, she says the conversations were scripted by Katie and she was assured nothing would actually happen. So you're telling the jury you admit that you said all the things that were recorded, those came out of your mouth? Yes, sir. By force, by force, but I did it. In cross-examination, the prosecution challenged her story and her actual relationship with the woman she's accused of wanting murdered. It made you mad when she left without paying. Did it? No, yes. God knows. I wasn't upset at all. Okay. Okay. This trial not over yet. In fact, it will continue on Monday morning, and closing arguments are also expected. If found guilty, Nevada de Paz is facing up to life in prison. At the Kedina Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Another news, a murder charge dropped for the man who fatally shot Anthony Earl Crawford back in 2019. Claiborne Jones accepting a plea deal in court today on a separate charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He's been sentenced to 25 years in prison. So all of this stems back to a February 2019 shooting at an apartment off of East Commerce Street. Investigators say that Crawford was drinking with three other people when Jones showed up, fired multiple shots, killing Crawford. As part of his plea deal, Jones has to serve half of the 25 years before he's eligible for parole. 
We are still working to learn the name of a man shot and killed on the southeast side last night. And right now, San Antonio homicide detectives are trying to determine whether the woman who shot him committed a crime or actually stopped one from happening. That's because she claims that the man broke into her home near East South Cross and Pecan Valley Road around 10 last night. The woman told investigators that she and her three kids were home when the man came into the laundry room at the back of their house. She told police she wanted to stop him from getting past a second door so she pulled out a gun and fired. The man was hit in the chest and died on the way to a hospital. Right now, that woman is not facing any charges. Two people killed in a shooting on Fredericksburg Road Wednesday night have now been identified. 40-year-old Evan Scott and 26-year-old Jasmine Scott family telling us that they are uncle and niece. Those two were shot while sitting in a parked car near a bar on Fredericksburg Road and Dunroe Place. A third person was also shot and at last check was in critical condition. Now the shooter and a motive here, that's what police are trying to figure out. So if you have any information on this case, the SAPD homicide unit wants you to call, wants you to call them. Their number is 210-207-7635. Now to the latest on Ukraine. The State Department has another urgent warning to Americans. This comes as we're learning more about what's believed to be the first American killed in combat. ABC's Alex Perche reports from the White House. Today, the State Department with an urgent warning to Americans to stay out of Ukraine. Spokesperson Ned Price saying this on MSNBC. Americans should not travel to Ukraine. It is inherently dangerous. The first American killed while fighting in Ukraine, 22-year-old Willie Cancel of Tennessee, died Monday. His wife, Brittany, confirming with ABC News. Overnight, saying her husband was eager to volunteer. Cancel is a former Marine and was working with a private military contracting company. Amid the fighting in the east, Russia striking Ukraine's capital, Kiev, yesterday. Rescuers found the body of a victim of one of those rocket strikes at a residential building. A Ukrainian journalist. The attack coming shortly after the UN secretary was meeting with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Ukrainian officials say five Russian missiles were launched at the capital city, with two of them hitting their targets, including that apartment. Thousands of civilians need life-saving assistance. Many are elderly in need of medical care or have limited mobility. They need an escape route out of the apocalypse. Time is of the essence, as the U.S. says it's seeing more and more evidence of war crimes across the country. The White House saying this of President Putin today. I think you've heard the president call him a war criminal. Uh, so I don't think the president uh, thinks of President Putin as somebody who is a model in the world. And now these satellite images of the Black Sea reports that Russia has now deployed trained dolphins to help protect its naval base there. Those dolphins reportedly used to stop underseas Ukrainian operations to sabotage Russian warships. Alex Perche, ABC News, the White House. Now new at five, a colorful Garden of Hope debuts today at Hemisphere. Clarity Child Guidance Center is observing Children's Mental Health Awareness Month by encouraging parents to talk with their kids about their thoughts and their feelings. And as Alicia Barretta reports, they're taking a creative approach here using pinwheels to spark a conversation. Pinwheels can represent childhood, joy, and playfulness. And just as pinwheels turn, they symbolize how children can do the same. That they can always turn their mental health around with the proper tools and help and support. Employees from the nonprofit Clarity Child Guidance Center planted 500 colorful pinwheels at Hemisphere for May's Children's Mental Health Awareness Month. We have been at capacity um, for the last three years. Um, it's become even more of an issue coming out of COVID. Kids have lost that social interaction, especially during their very critical developmental stages. They are isolated, they're anxious. Conditions can range from ADHD and anxiety to suicidal ideation, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. They can start talking about identifying their emotions instead of, you know, the regular fits or feelings of frustration that they start showing. We can start by asking them how you, to use their words. The Pinwheel Garden is located just south of Yanaguana Park, and it's here where parents will be able to pick up one of these pinwheels to facilitate those conversations just in time to kick off children's mental health Health Awareness Week, which kicks off Sunday. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. 
All right, now we're going to take a live look outside. We're going to the northeast part of San Antonio. This is I-35 at Randolph, where there has been some sort of accident. It looks like two lanes there are blocked, uh, and you see that the rest of traffic there is just going slowly. And if you could see a little to the right as well, the same thing with the other the traffic coming in the other direction. So just a reminder that there is traffic in the northeast, and it is rush hour, so be patient if you're waiting for anybody who usually comes from that direction. Made it up to 86 degrees today. The clouds help temperatures to stay below 90. The average high, by the way, 83. Right now, 90 Eagle Pass in Del Rio, usually a little bit warmer along the Rio Grande, and well, today they're following suit. West Kerrville, 75, 82 in Lakey, 88 Panamaria Maria, and near Lavernia, 82 meanwhile in Bull Verde. Not bad outside. It looks like it could rain because of the clouds that we have, but the clouds are thinning out right now, partly cloudy this evening. A nice evening, just a bit humid and a bit breezy as well. That southeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles. Miles per hour. Temperatures falling through the 70s. An update to those weekend rain chances in just a bit. All right, we'll see you then, Adam. Thanks. As many as 40 states and U.S. territories are seeing an increase in COVID cases right now, and it comes at a time when kids under six are still unable to get vaccinated. But Moderna hoping to change that soon. The drug, ma drug maker is asking the FDA for emergency use authorization of its COVID vaccine for kids six months to six years old. Moderna says its two doses show a strong antibody response similar to what we've seen in adults. The question now, will the FDA grant that request? There's no reason for the FDA to wait and we'll move as quickly as we can. The FDA needs the information, not all of which has been presented to them yet to make a determination. For now, the FDA plans to hold three meetings in June to discuss Moderna's vaccine for kids in that age group, along with Pfizer's. Now, the city is being recognized today for its leadership during the pandemic. Texas Biomed awarding San Antonio with the inaugural 2022 Stand for Science Award. This happened during its Global Health Symposium at the Botanical Garden today. Texas Biomed says the award is for the city supporting science and public health measures during the pandemic plus the city's commitment to research at their facility. Our city is one that works together. We rally around, one each, uh, rally around each other. Uh, we respond to crises and we know how to, to handle emergencies and that's what you saw here. And, and um, you know, it is about listening to science. Uh, it's about making sure that we're uh, being respectful and, and paying attention to what our public health providers are telling us and that's what we did here in San Antonio. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says not only did the city council work together throughout the pandemic, but they also worked hand in hand with county officials to come up with the best public health response. Still ahead on the news at five. Yes, we are going back to the grocery stores. You know, yesterday we showed you a lot of different ways to help you save on your bill. But today we're going to focus on how to get the most out of your meat. Coming up, simple ways to make a meal last longer. There is a new effort to fight hunger in Harlandale ISD. Starting next week, 14 community food pantries will be set up within the district. The food pantries are part of a goal for community first health plans to provide 24 seven access to essential and non perishable food items for students, their families and neighbors experiencing food insecurity. The first of 14 pantries will open next week in Gilbert Elementary. The remainder will be installed throughout the summer. So let's be honest, you know, a lot of us have gotten sticker shock at the grocery store lately, but one of the things that's also gotten more expensive is the meat. Yes, I took a look at the price of steak recently. Yeah. I recommend that. Beef, pork, chicken, it is all up. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has more money saving strategies from the $5 dinner mom. It's Taco Friday. We'll get this brownie. But Erin Chase, the $5 dinner mom, is also cooking up a solution for soaring meat prices. It's a little shocking, the percentage. We've seen it going up over the last year. And this year, the USDA predicts beef prices will rise nearly 7%, poultry nearly 8%. So how do you put dinner on the table? But I want you to think about how do I extend this protein because the protein is the most expensive part of any meal. The key to making more for less is in these cans. We're going to stretch it out with the black beans. 69 cents, 
the diced tomatoes and green chilies. Store or generic brands, definitely cheaper. I am gonna do probably two heaping spoonfuls. To DIY seasonings, about 20 cents. Taco shells, another $1.23. And cheese, she says, buy that in bulk. What one pound should have gone into 12 tacos, you'll see we'll have we'll have extra. No matter the meat, the trick is adding other proteins like lentils that are filling and nutritious but cheaper. You can go from having four servings to quickly having six to eight servings. Five dollar dinners are more challenging now, but Erin says with a tweak or two, you have the recipe for savings. And dinner is ready right now. Yeah. Just warm up some veggies and it's fast, easy. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to enjoy this meal at our house. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Okay, Meat. those do look good. Meat. Yeah, those do look good. Taco right. Tuesday, mm -hmm. taco any day, right? Yeah. Well, it's going to be brisket Saturday at the Caskey household. Ooh, it that is. sounds good. Yeah, well, my daughter's first communion. So, nice. yes, oh, it's going to be great. Celebrate. Exactly. That's why I'm bucking up the cash for the brisket. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do it. Oh, that's it's, wonderful. It's going to be great. Get to, oh, I got to tend the pit all day. Then remove it, rest it in a cooler to keep it warm, you know, right before we go to church. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Another Just wear the sunblock, right? Uh, well, yeah, especially in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to get to that because a very interesting weekend we have ahead of us. I mean, we're not expecting a whole lot of rain, unfortunately. It'd be, it'd be nice. I mean, I don't mind smoking, you know, the meat in the rain. You just need a little extra extra oak to put on the, the fire, in the firebox. That's about it. But we'll just have a few sprinkles, I think, tomorrow. Storm chance is actually looking better for Sunday nights now and a bit warm and humid out there, but that's to be expected. Okay, let's get right to the rain chances. Nothing extraordinary. I mean, we're talking 20 to 30% chance here and there throughout the weekend. So a few sprinkles Saturday and then a few storms possible as we get into Sunday night. Let's talk about it and of course take a look at our future cast. But you know, we had one of those days where those low gray clouds just hung around until mid afternoon and it looks like it could rain at any moment, but no, it's just not going to happen. It's just kind of a typical weather pattern that we see around here, especially this time of year with the low stratus for several hours in the morning, even up sometimes into the early afternoon. Then they finally break, but they don't produce any rainfall. Unfortunately, here's the bigger picture. The main activity across the nation now, there is some big time activity, and that's in the central states right now, especially from Oklahoma into parts of eastern Kansas and southern Nebraska. You see the severe or the tornado watch boxes in red and even severe thunderstorms already in parts of Nebraska. That's a dynamic system. It's just so far to the north, we can't tap into any of that moisture. We're going to have a different situation around here. Let's go through time here. I like how the future cast has kind of come around here, and I think it gives a better representation of what to expect this weekend. Tomorrow morning, it'll look like it could rain, and we'll just pick up a few sprinkles. That's about it. I don't anticipate it getting in the way of a long morning run, bike ride, walking the dog, yard work, mowing the lawn, whatever you need to do. It shouldn't really get in the way. A few sprinkles, 11 a.m. You see maybe just a few hits on the radar here and there. Quick splash and dash. By the afternoon, 3, 4 p.m., that's when the sun comes out. You'll need the sunblock later on in the day. Then Saturday night into Sunday morning, the low clouds take over again and we'll start the day Sunday with a few sprinkles. It'll look like it could rain, but I think all we'll get are a few sprinkles where you just need your windshield wipers, a quick psh, 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 little, little quick one, two on them, and that's about it. You know, one of those situations. Sunday night is what we have to start watching the weather in West Texas and even closer to the Rio Grande. Some storms could develop Sunday afternoon and then push eastward. And right now it does look like there's the potential that some of them could even make it to San Antonio and even basically up and down Highway 281 and points westward Sunday night. So that's what we're watching. It's a conditional situation. Saturday night, we've really lost confidence in anything developing then in terms of storms. 85 now, dew point is 66. Finally, some breaks in those clouds. 90s as you get farther to the southwest of town, closer to the Rio Grande. Hondo, for example, right now at 86. Seguin, 84. Most of us in the 80s. Lower 80s up into the hill country, burning now at 81. Tomorrow morning, right near 70 degrees with those low gray clouds and a few sprinkles through the noon hour. By the afternoon, we'll break into some sunshine and get up into the 80s. I think most of us mid to upper 80s. So here's your case at 12 hour forecast. There's that 10% chance in the morning of a few sprinkles, 71 degrees. By the noon hour, 20% chance because it's really just very light showers or a few brief passing sprinkles and then sunny into the afternoon and well into the 80s. As we look ahead through Sunday, right near 90 degrees for the high temperature, uh, you know, no big changes temperature wise and then next week stay still right near 90. All right, thank you, Adam.
All right, so we're going to meet the Cowboys' uh, surprise first pick, right? Yeah, but because this is a guy that wasn't on our radar because the guy that was went to the Texans earlier. You wonder if that was, you know, actually what the Texans wanted to do. He's stealing from the Cowboys, uh -huh. but you're going to meet him right now. And what did he have to say today at the press conference? Everybody kind of rolling their eyes. And when we come back also, is this DeMarvin's night tonight in the second round? Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys stayed at number 24 in the first round of the NFL draft last night in the first round, and they used their first pick to bolster the offensive line when they selected Tyler Smith, an offensive tackle out of Tulsa. Now, here he is today arriving at the Star in Frisco. They're hoping Smith at one point in his career will replace Tyron Smith at left tackle after the Cowboys lost both Connor Williams and Leo Collins to free agency. Cowboys claim that Smith was rated 16th on their draft board and that they were lucky to get him penciling him in as a starting left guard. For now, he has heard the negative reaction to his being drafted so high here is his response everybody has an opinion it's like you know like everybody has one <laughs> but uh <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> and you know you never want somebody else's opinion of you to become the reality and i simply won't let it so you know i understand criticism you know i take it well but i'm always working to get better at the same time Remember, we have two rounds tonight. The Cowboys have a second rounder at 56 overall and a third rounder at 88. At the same time, the Houston Texans use their third overall pick to go defensive, selecting Derek Stingley, a cornerback out of LSU. He was an All-American in 2019-2020, but suffered a foot injury last September and only appeared in three games. He did not work out at the NFL Combine, but on LSU's Pro Day. The Texans also traded down with their 13th overall pick to Philadelphia Eagles in exchange for the Eagles' 15th overall pick, along with the 124th, 162nd, and 166th. And they used the 15th pick to just like Aggies offensive lineman Kenyon Green and many mock drafts are going to the Dallas Cowboys at 24. Oh, this is amazing. I mean, I, I know that I, I feel great right now. So I know that um, when I get out there to, to practice training camp, um, I'm just excited to be out there with the teammates. And the Houston Texans have three picks tonight, one in the second round, 36, and two in the third round of 68 and 80 from New Orleans. Former Judson Rocket and Aggie defensive star DeMarvin Leal did not go in the first round last night, but is expected to be a second round selection tonight, possibly at number 56 for the Dallas Cowboys. They need to fill a hole left by Randy Gregory, who chose to sign with the Denver Broncos. Before that happens, DeMarvin had this message for San Antonio, where his family and friends have gathered for the big moment when it comes. Appreciate all the support. You know, y'all have had my back since, you know, high school, even before then. And, you know, to everybody that's not here at, my, at the, you know, draft party, still love you guys. Still, you know, appreciate everything that everybody has done for me. And so just stay tuned. And the draft will continue tonight at 6 o'clock our time. So no 6 o'clock newscast this evening, but we'll see you tonight on the night beat after the third round. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. We'll be right back. So just a reminder that we don't have a 6 p.m. newscast because of the NFL draft, but we will see you on the night beat. After that, thanks so much for watching.